Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. So this is the last and final video on theory of sampling. First video I have explained you the meaning, basics of uh, sampling theory, then sampling procedure, then parameter and statistic methods of uh, sampling, then determination of sample size. These are the things I've explained in first theory video. Second theory video I've explained about sampling distribution, standard error, statistical inferences, that is point estimation, interval estimation and hypothesis testing, level of significance. All these things I've explained in second video on this theory, sampling theory. Now this is the last and final video on sampling theory. Next video I'll start the problems on this sampling. Right. So in this video, I'm going to explain you about the procedure for hypothesis testing. So what are the steps involved in hypothesis testing? Actually, two types of statistical inferences are there. The first is estimation problem and second type of problem is hypothesis testing. Estimation problem means those problems where we don't have any information about population. We are studying the sample and finding out what would be the population parameter that is called estimation. But few problems are there where we have estimated problems, where we don't have any information about population. But majority of problems are there where we have some information about population and we want to prove whether that information is true or not. Can we depend on that information of population or not? By studying the sample, we want to prove. This type of problems are called hypothesis testing problem or significance, test of significance problems, right? Now, in this problem, what is the procedure of hypothesis testing? This point I'm going to explain in this video. So before explaining the procedure of hypothesis testing, Take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board. Then I'll explain the procedure of hypothesis testing. How? So in the coming problems, we have to do a number of problems on hypothesis testing. So for testing hypothesis, what are the steps involved? What is the procedure? And one more thing in examination, a theory question may also be asked regarding the procedure of hypothesis testing. What are the steps involved? So give more concentration, listen carefully, watch this video with full concentration, don't skip in between. Now, first step. First step is laying down of hypothesis. In these problems of hypothesis testing, the first step lay down the hypothesis. So before that you must know what do you mean by hypothesis. Hypothesis means tentative conclusion about some population parameter. Tentative conclusion about some population parameter. So before testing we should have in mind something about the population parameter so we have to lay down what is the hypothesis what are what is a tentative conclusion about population parameter so a statistical hypothesis or simply we call it as hypothesis is a tentative conclusion logically drawn concerning any parameter of the population example i have given here before conducting this test test of hypothesis we have concluded the, the average height of soldier in the army is 168 centimeter. There is a tentative conclusion that the average height of the soldiers in an army is 168 centimeter. This is a conclusion. Now we want to prove whether this conclusion is true or not. So in that case, we select a sample of soldiers and we measure the height. If the sample height comes to 168, then we come to the conclusion that definitely the population height is 168 only. That means all the height, all the height of all the soldiers is 168. So before conducting the test, we should keep in mind that the average height is 168. 
Secondly, a given drug cures 90%. Example, a company assumes that 90% uh, a given drug cures. Huh. So first we have taken the average height of soldier is 168 centimeter. So to conclude that we have taken a sample, we will prove whether it is 168, 168 is correct or not. Similarly, a given drug cures 90%. A manuf drug manufacturing company makes a contention that the drug is 90% effective. Now we want to prove whether the contention of the company is correct or not. So before conducting the test, we come to some conclusion that is called hypothesis. Thirdly, a given detergent cleans better than washing soap. Some detergent manufacturing company is claiming that their detergent is better than washing soap. This is the conclusion. So before conducting the test, some conclusion is arrived. That conclusion is called a hypothesis. The first step in testing of hypothesis, laying down of hypothesis. Now two types of hypothesis we have to lay down. One is called null hypothesis, the other is called alternative hypothesis. So here in statistical hypothesis, two different hypotheses are set. They should be constructed that one is accepted, the other should be rejected. So at the time of laying down of hypothesis, two set of hypothesis you have to frame. The first set, if it is accepted, the other set automatically should be rejected. If first set is rejected, automatically the second set should be accepted. In such a way, we have to frame the two hypotheses. One hypothesis is called null, N-U-L-L, -L, null hypothesis. And the second one is called alternative hypothesis. So what is null hypothesis? The null hypothesis asserts that there is no real difference between sample statistic and population parameter. So null hypothesis is usually denoted by HO. Now, null hypothesis, the meaning of null is no difference. The meaning of null is no difference. No difference between population parameter and sample statistic. No significant difference at all. That means sample corresponds from the population. The population and sample are one and the same. And it is denoted as HO. Then alternative hypothesis will be opposite of null hypothesis. Alternative hypothesis is opposite of null hypothesis. In null hypothesis, we have said there is no difference. In alternative hypothesis, yes, there is difference. There is difference between population parameter and sample statistic. That means sample is not corresponding with population. There is significant difference between population and sample. So it is denoted by H1. The alternative hypothesis denoted by H1. So in coming every problem, the first step in testing of hypothesis is laying down of hypothesis. So two set null hypothesis we have to lay down and alternative hypothesis we have to. Then second step, setup of suitable significance level. The second step, we have to set up a significance level. Significance level means what is the risk we are taking in this testing of hypothesis. Always it is not 100% correct. Whatever decision we give, the decision may be wrong. So what is the percentage that our decision may go wrong? For example, if the level of significance is taken at 50%, uh, 5%, sorry, 5%, then it means that whatever decision, or the conclusion we are coming to, that conclusion is 95%, it is correct. 5% there are chances that our decision may go wrong. That is called level of significance. So the validity of HO against H1. HO means null hypothesis. H1 means alternative hypothesis. The validity of null hypothesis against alternative hypothesis is then ascertained at a certain level of significance. Then the significance level stands for confidence with which the experimenter rejects the null hypothesis. At what percentage is confident that his null hypothesis is rejected against the alternative hypothesis? For example, 5% significance implies the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true. If the null hypothesis is true, it should have been accepted. But by mistake it is rejected. So what is the percentage that it is rejected? 
five percent is a possibility that the experimenter will reject the null hypothesis instead of accepting it that is called level of significance that is the second step now third step is setting up of critical region or oh, sorry uh, setting up of statistical test statistical test criteria so in the third step we have to apply the statistical test formula and find out the computed value of test statistic computed value of test statistic we find in third step so here the next step involves selecting the right probability distribution for a particular test we have different types of tests we have to select the test and apply the formula so normally we have number of tests called z test t test chi square test f test so so many tests are there so we have to see what is the nature of the data given accordingly we apply a specific test and find out the computed value of test statistic right then drawing the critical region after this fourth step we are drawing the critical region by consulting the table we have z area table t table chi square table f table so by consulting the table we will find out the table value or theoretical value and we draw a diagram showing the critical region and acceptance region so by referring to the appropriate statistical table we have different tables z table t table etc ascertain the critical value of test statistic so two values we have computed value and critical value computed value of test statistic we get here in third step by applying a formula in fourth step we find out the critical value from the table by referring the concerned table we find out the critical value the critical value depends on the level of significance and the alternative hypothesis adopted so this table value depends on two things the first uh, level of significance second what is the alternative hypothesis on these two things the table value depends next significance then set up the rejection and acceptance region the region of rejection is called critical region and the remaining region is called acceptance region then we draw a diagram in that diagram we draw two regions the one region is rejection region and rejection region is called critical region and the remaining region is called acceptance region that's all four steps completed last and final step is decision making making the decision how to make the decision compare the computed test statistic with the critical test statistic now two values we have computed value and table value third step we have calculated the value this is called computed value fourth step we have consulted the table and find out the critical value so two values we have computed value and critical value by comparing this two value we decide whether our computed value is falling in the acceptance region or rejection region if the computed value falls in the acceptance region we accept the null hypothesis we accept the null hypothesis and reject the alternative hypothesis suppose if the computed value falls in rejection region we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis so by comparing this computed value and critical value we take the decision whether null hypothesis should be accepted or it should be rejected so here i have given the next step is to compare the test statistic and if the computed value falls in acceptance region then the ho is accepted ho means null hypothesis is accepted suppose if the computed value falls in critical region null hypothesis is rejected so totally how many steps we have five steps in hypothesis testing so in the coming problems z pro z test problem t test problem chi square test problem f problem all these problems we have to apply these five steps of hypothesis testing formula will differ but the steps will remain same 
First step, laying down of hypothesis. First, we have to lay down what is the null hypothesis and what is the alternative hypothesis. First step over. Second step, level of significance. We have to set up the level of significance, whether at 5% or 1% level. Then third step is finding out the computed value of test statistic by applying the formula of Z test, T test, chi square test or F test. Fourth step is drawing the critical region by consulting the table probability distribution table we draw the diagram in which we draw the critical region and acceptance region last step decision making comparing this computed value with critical value we decide whether the null hypothesis should be accepted or rejected that's all these are the steps now next thing is error in testing of hypothesis two errors are there they are called type 1 error and type 2 error. Type 1 error means the error of rejecting the null hypothesis when it should have been accepted. By mistake, the null hypothesis is rejected instead of accepting. That type of error is called type 1 error. Rejection of hypothesis which is true. If the hypothesis is true, it should have been accepted. But by mistake it is rejected it is called type 1 error in theory in examination theory question will be asked what is type 1 error and type 2 error simply type 1 error means the error committed by rejecting the null hypothesis instead of accepting it that's it. now type 2 error opposite accepting the null hypothesis instead of rejecting it actually we should reject the null hypothesis but by mistake it is accepted it is called type 2 error. This will be asked in theory question. Last is one tail test and two tail test. In this hypothesis testing, two types of tests are there, one tail and two tail. One tail test will arise when the alternative hypothesis is having the sign less than or greater than. If the alternative hypothesis is having the sign less than or it is greater than, then we call it as one tail. Because the rejection region will lie either on left hand side or on the right hand side. Any one side. Either left side or right side. If the rejection region lies, it is called one tail test. Suppose if the rejection region lies on both the sides, then not equal to sign will be applied. It is called two tail test. So if in the alternative hypothesis, not equal to sign is written, it's a two-tail test. If in the alternative hypothesis we have less than sign or greater than sign, it is called one-tail test. That's all. This is the complete theory regarding sampling. So three videos I have taken. So watch the videos once, twice, thrice. Definitely you will get the complete points in your mind. And in examination, the theory question you can write. And the problems are also based on this theory. So if you have not watched this theory, definitely you will find it difficult in problems. What is hypothesis testing? What is level of significance? What is one tail test? What is two tail test? All these things you will find it difficult in problems. So that's why watch this theory video. And inshallah, the problems will continue in the next video.